ready. Yes. Did you start with the yes. desktop file or virtual machine? Yes. Sorry, yes. sir. So you should be seeing this screen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Click on Fade Man. How much you have already done? You can type right control. Right control has <coughs> full screen one. So screen kind of mess up in my computer. Ouch. Uh, okay. Then what I'm going to do is call the machine, please. Power of the machine. And come back to settings on the virtual machine. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Settings. Close the machine. 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 Close the Machine closed. Okay. Or right control Q. If you want. That power of the machine. Come to settings. Are you here? Then display. Enable 2D video acceleration, disable 3D video acceleration. From the display, settings, display, enable 2D, disable 3D. Okay? Enable 2D, disable 3D. As in screen. Is that okay? And start. Now, right control F will give you a proper full screen. Okay, finally, you should have a full screen virtual machine. Everybody okay? 
Oh, you should just wait. If you have the next up, it's fine. Okay. After the late startup, uh, my name is Sam Kama. I work for South Methodist University in Texas, and I am based at CERN. I'll be talking about introduction to GNU Linux. That I will try to come in with the Linux environment. Talk about the the most common tools that you're probably going to use when you are using Linux, and a bit of the computing. So we'll start with what's Linux and finding your work way around in Linux. Uh, start with the window manager. We'll talk about the shell, directory structure, and the permissions for the permission problems. Some basic commands, pwd, ls, mod, apropos, cd, main pattern, cd, move, rm, ln, and Linux support. And we'll continue with the useful tools <coughs> A possible example use cases where and how you can use them, such as the echo cat less, which locates WC head tail grab, diff, bzip and gzip, that tar SSH and SCP. These tools I think the most common set of tools that you're going to use when you're doing your analysis. And we'll talk about the connecting tools together. We can use them all together. It's called scripting, shell scripting, but we'll specifically talk about bash. What's standard in, standard out, and standard error, piping and redirection. And where you can go, some functions when you're stuck. And if these are not enough, Writing your hello world example, <coughs> unfortunately, you cannot cover uh, more detailed programs in 45 minutes. Okay, what's GNU Linux? Most people think that Linux is the whole operating system. Actually, it's GNU Linux. Linux is the only the kernel part of the operating system. It's developed by the Linux Trollots. It manages the hardware resources available in the computer and how the programs use it. GNU tools, on the other hand, are open source free programs by the Free Software Foundation in order to uh, <coughs> provide free Unix-like ability. It's currently composed of more than 350 software packages. When they're combined, they form a free open source operating system that you see in front of you right now. There are many flavors of the Linux since it's open source, everybody customizes it. And you can see the list of Linux distributions on this website. It's heavily used in scientific computing, not only in high energy physics, but the other fields of the scientific computing as well. For high energy physics, the scientific Linux is the most common distribution. It's being used by the top three laboratories, high energy physics laboratories in the world. CERN, Fermilab, and DAISY, they have slightly customized versions, but they all use scientific Linux. Linux operating systems are interested in multi-user and probably, arguably, the most secure operating system in the world. If I'm not mistaken, even the NSA has taken part in the development of some security features of the Linux. Many modern distributions have nice window managers most common being known and KDE, what you see is known. <coughs> As for point on point and click interaction and common personal use, by the help of these window managers, more and more people starting to feel comfortable with Linux. And it's due to its open source nature and built-in compilers for many languages. People develop 
almost commercial grade applications and <coughs> make them available for free. So you can find almost 100% sure an application that does what you need to. The login screen we see, we click on uh, this distribution we see here is prepared by Farouk Ibn. As you can see, one of the features, he customized uh, every feature of the Linux. This is customized for this school. And once you start the, uh, once you log in, you'll see the desktop. This is the typical non desktop. The menus are on the top, and applications menu shows the available installed applications, some of them. And groups, and places, source the list, the most commonly accessed directories on the disk, and some other network connections and search algorithms, search. And the system menu contains the preferences and administration. From the preferences, you can customize your desktop to your liking, how you uh, modify it to behave as you like. From the administration, you can customize the system itself set up servers or start services. For example, you can start your own web uh, server and put your page on it, or install more applications. The quick start panel is right, in the, right next to the uh, system menus. Uh, there are several buttons there. For Farouk has already put uh, Firefox Terminator and multiple shell terminal editor, and several text editors, VI improves, Cream, and Emacs. Uh, there are typically two types of uh, editor users, VI users and Emacs users, and they don't like each other's uh, just, uh, editors most of the time. <coughs> uh, but you don't have to use this if you are familiar with the other operating systems, you can use nEdit, gEdit, or Nano. Uh, nEdit and gEdit similar to the Notepad, and Nano is the Pico, or it's a shell editor, basic, really basic. Just opens a text file, saves the changes, <coughs> that's it. You can see the features of the Emacs in this address, and the same for the VI. Uh, it's actually VI improved or some improved features with VI. Uh, for our purposes, the most important item is this one. It starts in one terminal, which is which starts a shell in it. It might look scary in the beginning for the first timer, but once you get used to it, you will feel that it's really powerful and you will start to hate mouse and if possible, yeah. Anyone who is opening the shell terminal for the very first time, please unplug it. One, four, five, six, seven. Okay, please start the shell terminal so that you can test, uh, you can try to type whatever I did in the tutorial so you can try to follow some of the things that exist in the terminal. It's almost the same as what you have. Uh, internally, you have to type the comments, but there's a really, really nice feature in the bash. This tab button is about caps lock in your keyboards. I don't know if everybody can see it. It has a uh, bind to the auto bind. <coughs> so whenever you, if you remember, for example, you know there's a comment, you can remember part of it, but you don't remember what was the name or how it's written. You, when you press the tab, it completes, it shows the possible comple completions, that possible columns that start with the, the amount of keys, amount of characters that you enter, or it can complete the patch, so you don't have to memorize the patch. You can just tab and select. It's really easy, you don't have to memorize anything. You can just have a hint and then tab completes most of the things for you. So, if you have opened the shell, let's start with the directory structure. 
If you type the PWD, it will show the current directory. So you should be seeing this window. When you type the PWD, it should show home payment and continue with the next line. The directories in the Linux are formatted in this way. Each slash uh, represents a subdirectory. So uh, it's a directory tree. The first one means the root node is the top level uh, node in the directory tree. Everything in the Linux operating system resides under this tree. It doesn't matter how many disks on, on which computer it is. It has to be under the root. So the directory tree is in this format. You have a root node and then you have subdirectories or files below this. And they have subdirectories and trees and files. And they have, you can have as many, as deep as, you can go as deep as you like on this way. It's pretty long. It's not infinite, but it's pretty long. So there's no problem with how many directories or how many levels of directories you have. And our home directory is in slash, then home, then slash payment. So in directory, <coughs> our home directory stays here. We can represent directories in the directory tree in two ways. One of them is the absolute path that you start typing the full path starting from the root like in the <coughs> this blue arrow. For example, if you want to represent the homeworks, we'll write slash home, slash mark and slash homeworks. Or if you want to uh, uh, type it in relative, using relative paths, assuming that, for example, you are in the ISTAP 2011 folder, you will just type double dot and slash homeworks. There are two special directories in every directory tree. These are dot and double dots. You just type in dot and double dot. Dot means the current directory, it access the current directory. So if you want to, for example, you have several comments existing in different places, but you want to start the one in the current directory, not somewhere else, then you type it with the dot slash the common name. Or if you want to refer to the directory tree one level above, for example, for the home in the family directory is double dots. It always points to the one directory above. But for the root, it's always point back to itself. So the root, root is top level, it doesn't go any higher. OK, and how do we see the, what's inside the directory? We use the ls command. ls command lists the contents of the directory. It shows subdirectories and the files located in the current directory. For example, if you go uh, to the documents folder and type in ls, you will see that it contains a pta8worksheet.pdf. Or if you type ls in the, your current folder, you will see the available folders in your home. It can take a path as an argument, and it will list the path. For example, if you try typing ls slash, and it will list the contents of the root folder in the directory. This argument path argument can be relative path or absolute path. It's up to you. OK. I mentioned arguments. What are the arguments? Almost all programs in Linux have some arguments to alter their behavior. Most of them will display a summary of available arguments with the minus minus help. It doesn't show nicely here, but it's minus minus help. So you can try, for example, ls minus minus help, and you will have a long list of options that's available, arguments available to the ls. You can have even more detailed information about what a comment does, how it works, through the mail pages or the information pages. Here's <coughs> the man or info page that is accessible through two comments. One of them is the man, the other one is the info. You can try man ls to see the manual page of the ls. In order to quit man, just type q. Man and info page is also confirmation 
contain information about system functions that are used on the program. It's not necessarily the commons. There are also some C library functions, system functions that you might use. We will see one of them towards the end of the course. Or if you have a vague idea of what you need to do, what you want to do, you can try to use a proposed command. It will search through available MIME files uh, and list the ones that uh, contains the keyword you typed in. If you want, you can try Apropos Minds by Self or Man Apropos. So, how do we move in the directory tree? How do we change the directories in the directory tree? We use cd. cd means check shortcut for the same change directory. Uh, you can type, you can give the uh, absolute path or relative path to cd again. For example, going into the homeworks is cd homeworks. And if you type the list, it's empty as far as I know. And you can, for example, create a new directory with the make other, it's make there. And type in the directory name, it will create a new directory. And you can see here. Then go into that and move in the directory as you like with the cd command. Okay. What about if you want to remove this directory? Then you can use rmdir, but the directory has to be empty for rmdir to work. <coughs> All these commands work, assume that your user has permissions to do so. We mentioned that Linux is the most secure, so you can have permissions to access and do certain stuff. What are these permissions? It's a long subject, but for the time being, if you type, for example, ls-l, it will list the directory content in long format, and you will see some letters on the side. It's rwx, for example, for the home folder, rwx minus rx minus uh, rx, r minus x, and some usernames. What, what do they mean is the first letter, b means for the directory, l means <coughs> for the, l is for the links, r means this directory is available for reading. And depending on the position of which triplet here, it's either for user, group, or others. <coughs> R means this directory is accessible for reading, W is for writing, and X for accessing or executing. You can also uh, type these permissions as octets that are numbers in the octal basis. R corresponds to 4, 2 corresponds to 2, uh, sorry, W corresponds to 2 and X corresponds to 1. So, for example, for the root folder, only the user root, this one is the user, this one is the group, only the user root can access or modify or enter into root directory. So, if you try to go into the root directory, for example, cd slash root, you will get a permission denied error. But anybody, this last group, can access the home folder. It's open to everybody. And these numbers, RWX, RX, RX, is 755 in octal days. You just add up the, the numbers, the permissions that you have in the group to find the octal number. OK, we can create and remove directories. <laughs> what about copying files? Uh, you can copy files with the cp command, the cp source destination. If you use with the minus r flag, it will copy the contents. If you pass, for example, a directory for the source, it will copy the directory into the destination for the directory. Instead of copying, we can use ln minus s, a source folder, <coughs> or destination folder, or command, to create a shortcut, a link into this uh, link for the source in the destination. You can move a file or rename it. If you think about renaming, it's just moving the same file to a different name. But the move command, use an old name. If you want a new directory, a new name. If you omit the directory, it will stay in the same directory, but it will get the new name. 
You can delete a file with the RM file, or if you want to delete directories and the files and everything below that mode under the tree, you can use rf minus rm minus rf. It means that delete everything recursively and don't ask any questions. So do not do rm minus rf tilde slash start. This should be okay. This is text. What it means is delete everything under my home folder. Okay. This command caused me uh, shed many tears. <laughs> don't do that. Okay, the next topic I want to talk about is the environment variables. The shells that the programs that we work in have some variables that define <coughs> called environment variables. They are typically used for configuring auxiliary programs, the programs that you use. For example, you can type n command to list, but you will see a huge list for this. And here, some examples, if you can read for example, this is ls underscore colors. It tells the ls program to use which color for the which type of file. So, for example, let's see. For MNG, this is a representation of color, LNG, and PCH, they're all movies, etc. This environment variable set up to uh, gives information to external programs that we use. But uh, you can also set them with the export comments. For example, you can use export path the, this one. For the sh uh, in the shell, uh, shell replaces sorry, uh, replaces every dollar variable. Using brackets will help you to the value of the variable. If I use, for example, dollar at the library path, <coughs> it will put slash app slash root slash lib slash root instead of ld library path when executing the program. Uh, there are several important uh, environment variables. Most important, most notable ones are the dollar path environment. It lists the directories that are searched for your comments. When you type in a comment, the shell will go through the directories that's listed in the dollar path environment and try to find your comment. The first comment you found is executed. Typically, this is used for the setting up the analysis software for the major experiments, for example. You put your programs in, front, in the front, in front of the path, so any other program common executable in the path which is below, later in the line, will not be executed, but yours will be executed. Another one is the LD library path. The similar thing for the libraries. The shell will search LD library path starting from the beginning until it finds a, a library for the libraries that are used in your comments. Again, this trick is used for the major analysis libraries. And the dollar home, it's your, it points to your home folder. For us, it's slash home slash <coughs> Feynman, but it doesn't have to be for any, in any other system. But if you write a script, for example, using dollar home will always point to your home. As I said, or you can you can add append something to the path using export path dollar home slash p dollar path, or you can uh, invent a new one export process. Well, this root is, is necessary for starting computation. Okay, some other useful commands, externals outside the shell. Echo commands. It prints the argument that you passed in, but it can also expand the shell variables. For example, if you type my echo in quotation, my home directory is dollar home, it will print my home directory is dollar Feynman. Sorry, slash home slash Feynman. Cat is the uh, command for printing files. It will dump the contents of the file into your screen. But it can, uh, here you see, for example, cat test file, this is a test file, cat test file too, this is another test file. If I pass it to uh, files, it will concatenate them. Print one after another in the order that you type the argument. 
So you can use this to merge two files, combine two files together, or you can pipe the files, the contents of files, to uh, another common, what you will see. <coughs> the Another next commonly used tool is less. It's a pager. It displays the, uh, the text files or the, the, the standard in, which I will define shortly, in pages. You can search uh, the less in the file. You can go forward, backwards. It's just to see the file or files. See one less for the detailed explanation on how to use it. Uh, most common uses of this program is reading some ASCII files or piping your output to the OS so that it doesn't go to your shell. In history, it lost in the history. Okay. <coughs> With the OS, you can look at the long files, but what about if you want to just look at the <coughs> beginning or end of files? Assume that you want to see a uh, beginning of a file, or just you have a program which runs and at the end, it says, I failed, I succeed, everything's good. And, but it generates a 20 megabytes of file. Are you going to open the file and go until the 20 megabytes? No, you don't have to. You can use head and tail to access the beginning or the end of the file. Uh, you can pass the number of lines you want to see with the end or number of characters you want to see with the C arguments. Tail head minus n 10 will show you the first 10 lines of the file. Uh, another good use of tail uh, is tail minus f, it means to follow the file. If the file is changing continuously and you want to always to see the end, you can use tail minus f, it will follow the file. If whenever a file changes, it will print it to the screen. Assume that you have a long running program, it has a, some printing some box and you want to launch and you come back and you want to see where it is. You just type tail minus f and it will start following the file. And also another useful one is wc. Heads, tails and wc. The wc stands for word count. When you type, when you use the wc, for example, if you have a process done <coughs> in your home folder, not in home, but somewhere in it. We'll see how to find it. It will print the number of lines, number of character <coughs> words in the file, text file, and number of characters it uses. Uh, you can specify, I can. I only want this one from the, with the common items, for example. We see minus L will give you only the number of lines. Okay. Which which command tells you where is the command that you actually executed stays in the directory tree? <coughs> it searches the, all the folders in the path environment and tries to find the first instance of the first place where the comment that you typed in which comment stays in. This is also important, for example, uh, for the trick that I mentioned about the big softwares. If you have some issues with the program, you start the program, but it's not behaving as it should. Okay, you can type which and the common name for the Atlas, for example, which uh, Athena or which script name to see whether you are taking it, you are using your modified file, or you're using the the file of your release. So it's handy to find out which program you execute when you type in something. And, but it uses it searches only in the path environments, nowhere else. Another one is locate. Locate command shows all the files or directories which contain the keyword that you typed in, in the their names. It uses an index database and it doesn't care about what's the environment database. Uh, sorry, it uses an index database and doesn't care about, care about the path environment. But the drawback is it can only locate the files 
when the index database is created. So if you create a new file, it won't see it. Here are some examples. For example, which locate tells me that I'm using the locate from slash usr slash bin. And I typed locate PTA worksheet. We saw it on the directory tree. It's in home frame on documents and PTA page there. Um, I created two files for the cat example. Locate test file. As these are home by home folder. <coughs> but also you can see that actually there are several other uh, test files, several other files which contain the test file name. Test file lower and mail test file. Uh, uh, great. You should mention that look if you just create the file, look it doesn't find it because it should write to database. Right? Yeah, you have it knows the files only when the database is created. And when when uh, what's the frequency of this? Typically, well super user can create this file at any moment. It's called update DB. But typically most distributions have an automated shell scripts that runs periodically at certain intervals. That depends from distribution to distribution, but with one week it should be fine. It's less than one week <coughs> for this time. Anyway, this is a bit tough and one of the most important <coughs> tools that you would use in the Linux. It's grab, and we'll talk about a little bit about regular expressions. Grab is really powerful. It can search the pattern that you want in the files. Most common use that at least I use for is, for example, searching for a variable name or a function name or a class name in a huge set of sources. I want to know how it's defined or what it does or what it's assigned to. I just type in the grab and uh, file name. Here are some examples. <coughs> grab minus IR means that include the case. I don't care about and how it's written. And search everything recursively. If there's a directory that I gave you, go into this directory. For the JPT result, which will, you will use in the analysis class, analysis examples, you see that it shows me the files and where it's referenced in all these files. There are much more than the list of them. It can take regular expressions, which are special syntax for declaring the patterns. They are really, really, really powerful. I would strongly urge you to learn C man or grab and man seven regex and search on the internet. If you get just get some notions of regex, reg, regular expressions and how it works, you automatically learn per language. Actually, I'll just mention the basics so that you will have some idea. Every character matches to itself. <coughs> But if you use dot character in place of something, it means that here I accept any characters. I don't care about what is it. It can be space, capital A, C, B. It doesn't matter. Brackets, square brackets, defines a set. It means that in this place, I, I want only the characters that I list in this brackets, nothing else. And carrot or hat defines the beginning of a line. For example, you can say that I want the lines that are starting with a space or with a slash. But if you put this hat, carrot, inside the square brackets as a first character, it means that I don't want the characters in this set. Anything else is fine, but I just don't want these. Dollar means at the end of the line. For example, you might want to see the files, the lines which have a tab, an extra space at the end. And there are also some multipliers, or multiple multipliers. If you use question marks, it means that whatever I've typed before this question mark, it can be zero or one instances. I don't. It's possible that this 
the previous character or previous pattern do not exist, but it should not be more than one. Okay? But if you say plus, the previous pattern that I typed in before plus must exist at least once, but it can be it can have several times. For example, if you type ABC question mark, ABC ABC will not match, but ABC only ABC will match. But if you type ABC plus, ABC ABC will match, ABC ABC will match, ABC 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 ABC, any any amount of ABCs will match. And star means zero or more. There can be none or there can be infinite. I don't care. Please go start with the month rec and month seven records. And Come, it can come handy as you progress towards your career. Okay. Once you learn the regular expressions, first curl comes automatically. Anyway, diff and bzip and gzip. There is also one important uh, comment that you would like to see and use. Diff gives you the differences between two files that you have. Uh, the left arrow or left uh, right uh, less than sign refers to the first file and the uh, uh, right or greater than sign refers to the file two. For example, here, this is also from the examples that we have in the folder. I'm diff differentiating, I'm trying to see what's the differences between these two files. Here, it means that these arrows are coming from the resolution CPP they are changed to the these two lines in the resolution stop us. And you can see the difference. Actually, they are not too many. This is most useful <coughs> for you when you're writing something. You're writing your thesis, you're writing a C program. It was working in the morning, you started and start working in the afternoon. You cannot compile, it doesn't work. Why is not working? You can use diff commands with your backups, which you should be keeping, if possible, in important things every day, to see what you changed and what might be the cause of the failure that you're experiencing. You can use minus B and capital B to ignore the white space changes in the documents in the text files. It also works for binary files, but it will just tell you whether the files are different or not. Okay, the next useful utilities are bzip and gzip. <coughs> These are compressors. When you give a file name, they will try to compress, finding the patterns, similar patterns, and encoding them. Try to reduce the file size and do this. It's useful if you have a slow connection or propagate internet, and you want to transfer these files over the internet, or you have a USB stick, but you have a large text file, you can compress it into something small, you can easily copy the USB stick. The A there work is just to compress, reduce the size. Not always works, but typically it will reduce something. Most of the time, EZIP2 is better than GZIP, but it's slower and requires more memory. But nowadays, you won't see any difference. <coughs> you can uncompress something zip with B unzip 2 or G unzip. Here's some examples. For example, the, I copy the same file. I make a copy of the update notes text, again, existing in your home folders. So I then update copy. They are about 30 kilobytes each. I compress both of them. And now <coughs> they've got automatically extensions for the BZIP2 BZ and the GZIP GZ. And you see that their file size is reduced to one third. If the files are bigger in the text, if there are more <coughs> the compression ratio will be higher. And 
If I type this beyond the benefit, <coughs> they, they return to the exit. They are all space. Nothing is lost. How does it compare to the tar? Tar is tape archive. It doesn't compress at all. It just concatenates files one another after another with the file name. And the, it's coming, it's an old utility we are talking about it, from the Cape Archive days. Uh, and the old days, we didn't have hard disk space, USB sticks. What we have is one gigabyte, well, this well. is rather recent, one gigabyte tapes that like the music cassettes, which don't exist also nowadays that you write the data in. So tar is an archiver. Uh, it creates an archive, archive name, and using the tar list that you gave, file names or the directories you type in, with the tar minus cf. <coughs> if you want to extract from the, an archive, you can use tar minus xf, while the f, f should be the tar file name. And a file, you can give it a file name to extract a specific file, only one file or only set of files from this archive. If you just, oops, if you just omit the file name, it will extract everything. This is also useful for transferring files, directories, or your work directory between, for example, if you're working with CERN, the LX Plus, or retrieving from there, it's also the most common software distribution, source distribution system in the Linux world. You can add minus Z or minus J arguments to the tar, so minus ZCF or ZCF, to compress them at the same time. So <coughs> these two arguments will compress the archive with the BZIP or GZIP respectively. Minus V will print the names of the files that it use. Uh, but if you want to, for example, test the archive, you can use minus tf. It will not write anything to the disk. It will just extract the files to see if you downloaded the file correctly or it works. If you have, the, for example, you have the archives or your files, you want to transfer it to something, then nowadays FTP don't work pretty much because it's not secure unless it's an anonymous entity. But what you do is you use SCP. It's secure copy. It copies a file in a machine, in a host, with a given username, to another file, a different host, with a different username. It can also work inside your host, but it's pointless. In here, example, for, uh, I copied the compact. Uh, in this example, <coughs> I compressed and created an archive of the compact folder. Assume that I worked on it uh, with the tutorials or the examples. I typed in something, I modified, but I want to take them with me to my home so that I can work on more. What I do is create the archive and then copy it on some network machine. You, you cannot. You will probably have some problems if you want to stick your USBs on the disk machines. But if you have a network machine account, in this example at the LX Plus, you can just SCP file name, user, and the machine, and the destination <coughs> path. It will ask my password in here, and just copy. Similarly, I can download it from the remote again. But this time, <coughs> the file name, the remote file name, uh, that's for the current directory, the local file. Is it possible to use BZIP here? Well, uh, where? In TAR? Compress, yes, in TAR. Yeah, if you type G, minus J, it will compress with the BZIP. If you type minus Z, it will compress with the GZIP. So, TAR minus JCF will create a BZIP TAR file. SSH. SSH enables you to log in to the remote machine. <coughs> Open, it's, uh, it opens a secure channel, encrypted, so somebody else cannot listen what you're typing and it won't see, it will just see gibberish, garbage. Uh, it will start, uh, <coughs> unless it's disabled or specifically removed, it will start a shell screen 
as you start up here in the terminal window here in the remote machine. And you can type in your commands as if you were typing. It can forward X11 connections, which are the squeeze, for example, here. I log in with the minus X command, enable the GUI forwarding, log in to the LX Plus, and start a small uh, tool, toy, X eyes, which follow the mouse everywhere in the screen, and it's displayed on my local window, although it's executed at certain plus 439. But normally in the SSH you have to type in your password every SSH connection. Sometimes people don't type that. What you can do is you can use SSH key Unless specifically disabled by the remote <coughs> administrator, you can type SSH key It will create two files in your home folder. Tilde that SSH and IDRSA and tilde that SSH and IDRSA file. If you add the contents of the rdisc.pub to the ss.ss authorized keys file in the remote host, in our example, this plus, then I don't have to type in my password. It will automatically uh, understand that I'm coming from a trust computer. It won't ask my password. I can just directly log in in the SCP or in the SSH. But be careful. If you then, if you leave your console open, if you leave your computer for a take a coffee, somebody else might log in to your machine without typing your password. Make sure that the machine that you use, this string is safe. Okay. Now we have a set of tools. What we can do is we can connect them. But in order to understand how to connect, we need to understand <coughs> the streams in the Linux or in the shell. There are three, actually four, three streams. The standard in, standard out, and standard error. Standard in is the input stream for a program. Every program, uh, programs can read their input. For example, when you type something into the keyboard, it goes to goes to the standard in uh, stream and then the program is created from the standard in stream. Standard out is the output of a program. When you print cat, it will copy the contents of the uh, file to the standard out stream and the shell will read the standard out stream and display it on the screen. Um, standard error is like standard out was a special uh, stream. Typically programs copy their error messages or the diagnostic messages to standard error stream so that it goes through a different channel to the screen by default. But you can redirect these. For example, uh, you can connect standard out of a program to the standard in of one, another program. That means that you can make a chain. You can take the standard in from a keyboard or from a file. You take the standard in from a file with this sign. You type the comments and less than the file name. It means that you use this file as standard in for this comment. It's like you're typing the contents of the file to, this, uh, to the comments uh, to the input request. You can send these output standard out to a file with the other way around, greater than sign. If you, for example, use great my search string in standard in all CPP files, it will list, it will send the output of this grep into the found file. It will override it. It will erase the, if it doesn't exist, it will create a new file. If it exists, it will delete the old file and write it on the uh, you can use double grade for the bash to append at the end of it rather than deleting the file. So it will increment what's inside the file. You can also redirect this standard error. Normally in this chain, 
standard errors go to the screen for individual <coughs> columns. They are executed one after another. And they are outputs are connected like this. But you can also send the standard error to the standard output of the program. All you need to do is the commons, then this construct for the bash. Well, unfortunately, this you need to know, but you can look up the code. How you connect these two standard in and standard out is called piping. You use uh, pipe character. I don't remember. It's, it's uh, it's this character, like a line. It's not column. I don't know if you can understand. It's pipe character. You can search for it. It doesn't show up nicely here. So when you type something like this, again, it doesn't show nicely here. <coughs> you can connect columns to each other. Here is some example. What we can do is we can do this typing from the command line, or we can put them to a file. That's called script. And then execute. <coughs> but in this script, these environments, uh, sorry, uh, these shells provide you some basic information for of the computing languages. They have conditionals. They can have variables or they can have loops. If you put them together using these conditions, loops, and then the variables. Including the piping, you can write pretty, pretty nice applications with a uh, little work. For example, here, this is an example. <coughs> uh, what this file does is, as soon as you have your thesis ready or an article ready, you created all your plots in the PDF, but uh, your library or the author of the my uh, journal wanted to EPS files. They don't want the PDF files. What you can do is, for all the PDF files that you will use, this one finds all the PDF files in the front folder and below. <coughs> tries to find the file in the text files in the front folder. If it finds the files, it creates, it converts the PDF file into EPS and then replace the reference to the PDF file in the latex to the EPS version. <coughs> and with these ones, for example, if you have 10 latex files and 100 plots, you have to do it manually one by one. But with this shell script, everything will be done in two seconds. So if you connect them together, you can do basic applications pretty quickly. All including comments are 22 lines. But for the shell scripts, you need to have something special. The first line must be this. This <coughs> hash, exclamation mark, then the name of the shell. I'm using bash. I'm a bash fan. So this is hash, exclamation, slash, bin, slash, bash. If you use another shell, this will be good. This is another example. And I have some questions in here. <coughs> what this script does is get a file name, opens this file, this file contains patch to the files. They might be deleted or they might be currently existing in the file directory somewhere in, in the directory files. It checks whether the file exists. If it exists, it gets its file size, <coughs> then adds it and then prints them with the thousand separator in it. So you can you will have for example one dot zero zero dot zero zero four one million bytes. Can you guess what cut let I'm out doing here? <coughs> this for example here or what are these? Or why am I using while here, but not the full loop. If you think that you know the letter shell pretty nicely, can you answer these questions? I'll answer it afterwards if you, the 
lecture if you really want to work. Can I improve this script? <coughs> Can it be done better? Try to find that. And try to understand what this set does. By the way, this is a regular expression. So you're not regular expressions. You can use it in any, any base comment, like find the. No, regular graph. expressions used are only with the commons which understand regular expressions. Grab understands, aug understands, send out understands, but with these three commons, you can yeah, pretty much do everything. There are some other, for example, all the words, adds, set, uh, adds. Locate, for example, this uh, Not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does get some arguments. OK, <clears throat> you're stuck and you don't know what to do. What can you do in the Linux? Try man and equal. If you know what to do, if you know what commands that you can use, Try to type man or info common name and see what it does. Maybe it does already something. For example, you can look at the man locate and see whether it uses the regular expressions or not. You can go to the TLDP org, the, the Linux documentation project. They will contain a lot of guides, how to about Linux, and nice documentation. You don't need all of them. Don't be scared. You just go and read whatever you need. You can ask Google or your favorite search engine for quicker answers. You just don't need to understand what's happening. You just need to answer, ask Google. There's a uh, nice website, <coughs> advanced best scripting guide. Don't be scared about advanced. It explains from everything from the beginning, giving also the advanced information. It's, there's a link in here. When we put this into Indico, you can go. Or you can just Google for the apps guide. I think it's the first state that comes in from the Google. I didn't mention too much, but set is a stream editor that uses the regular <coughs> expressions. It's really powerful. Try to see this web page, how what it does and how it's used. This one is also you want to learn about. You can also look at the detailed menu here, but this one is better for studies. Alk is the power tool of the Linux. I didn't mention, I just showed you uh, use how to use it. It uses a data-driven approach, so <coughs> it doesn't care what's, rest, what's in the rest of the file. It just does the thing that you mentioned for the data you uh, asked for. Go here and take a look at it. If you know arc, set, and bash, if you know these three pretty nicely, you are kind of a Linux expert. OK. But if Nothing is enough. I just didn't finish. I mean, you can be able to find. You can write your own program. Unfortunately, we don't have time to describe how to write. Just I'm going to give you basics. So you can write. This is a hello world example. <coughs> Linux comes with other compilers and uh, other compilers, and the language is built in. For example, four <coughs> and C++ comes automatically. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the C++ programs because in the afternoon, in the rules session, we're going to talk about C++ a little bit more. And every C++ program that you need to write, you need to have a main function with the signature. Int main is either void or int main of C or B. Uh, like this, for example, here, this is the main function. What it does is this IO stream gives you access to the standard out stream in the, uh, in the shell. What it does is it just prints the hello world <coughs> in the standard out stream and puts an end line at the end and returns the log. You compile it with the G++ <coughs> minus all the program name, hello world program, and then the source file. And I actually used it to hello world. I don't know why everybody makes hello world. But it's kind of stuck, I guess. And if you want to be a bit more complicated, this one, for example, tells you where program at something is odd or even the number you enter. It uses again the streams. It types something in the standard out stream. It reads from standard in stream. You just type in the number. 
If the number is odd, it prints this is an odd number. If it's even, it's an even number. I can give you the sources so you can just check. Again, it's compiled in the same way, G++ minus O, the, uh, the program name, and the source names. I execute here. This is an even number. This is an odd number. That's it. But these programs are not good. These are just illustrative. There are some caveats you can crash this program easily. Okay, a uh, couple of minutes ago I showed you a check sizes script which <coughs> finds the number of files existing on the disk and sums up your file sizes. This is the same thing in C++. <coughs> I mentioned that there are also some information in the system functions in the manuals. Try uh, typing one two step to see what it does. The first one, IOStreamR defines since the out standard is standard out and the get line function to read from the standard thing. Uh, string defines the strings, the character strings for the data. It reads the line from the standard in, initializes the values. This data type holds the file information on the file system. It reads the file system, it reads the file system, fills in the file information into the structure. If the file don't exist, it increments the number of deleted. If it exists, then adds the file to the total side and prints. <coughs> but this doesn't have thousands separated in it. So it doesn't print 1.00.00 for 1 million bytes. It will just type 1 million. Can you put in the, can you try to put in the thousands separated in this printout the last time? Try to see if you can do it. Sorry, can you make an array of strings? Yeah. Not a good idea, but yes. You should be using vectors or, well, actually vectors, those string pointers, and then that will make it this is the most efficient way. Uh, some last words. Yeah, GNU Linux is a big topic and cannot be covered in 45 minutes. I didn't even manage to do it in 45 minutes. It took much longer, I guess. Sorry for that. I skipped most of the details and trying to explain the basics that you might need when you start with the Linux. There are some more, some useful comments that I did not have chance to mention. Uh, it doesn't matter where, whether you want to work in theory or you want to work in experiment. Improving your knowledge about the Linux and the program language <coughs> will definitely help you to give you advantage and provide you some alternative solutions. Please take a look at the references that I mentioned in the talk. You don't have to go through all of them, but you can take your time and read them if you want to have good skills, know how to use your tools. And finally, there are enormous amount of, of information <coughs> on the web, on the GNU and the Linux, actually, I think 20 percent, maybe more, is about something that is probably about this. If you phrase your question properly, you can find answers to them almost immediately. The trick is how to ask the right question. If you don't ask the right question, oops. Is that a spoiler? Hmm? Is that a spoiler? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume everybody already knows. Don't read if you haven't. I haven't told it as a spoiler, actually. I assume that everybody already knows what it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>